Welcome back to another console collector video. Hey everybody, console collector here. Today's video, we're going to take a look at my top 10 favorite games of the past decade. 2019 is coming to an end and I thought this was a great way to finish off the decade. There are a lot of great games that came out in the past decade from 2010 to 2019, so only picking 10 was pretty hard. This video is going to be pretty long, so grab a drink, grab a snack, sit back, relax and enjoy, and be sure to let everyone know in the comments what were your favorite games from the last decade. So with that said, let's get started. The Resident Evil 2 Remake Well, where do I begin? It's Resident Evil 2, but oh boy, it sure looks better than the original. The gameplay is now in the style of Resident Evil 4, which I personally really like. You still got your typical zombies in here. You know, you got your item management with the little box and all that. So it still feels like Resident Evil 2. But just graphically, amazing. You got your quick little jump scares. You know, it's all here. So you still get to play as Leon Kennedy, the rookie cop, but there's other characters you can play as as well, including this little segment here with Sherry. Where you going, Sherry? I told you to stay put. Changing the characters really breaks up the game, and I really like it. You get to take a little break from the typical zombie slayings. Seeing this game again, just with such graphical improvements, it's like playing a new game. I really appreciate how this game looks. And of course, you still get to play as Claire Redfield, which is Chris Redfield's sister. I originally beat Resident Evil 2 and this remake as Claire. So I'm really hoping to see Code Veronica redone in this style. So we can't talk about the remake without talking about this guy. Shit. Mr. X. He is a serious pain in the butt in this game. He is relentless. This thing is he can be stopped, but only temporarily. Mr. X definitely has the feel of the Nemesis from Resident Evil 3. I am really looking forward to the Resident Evil 3 remake coming soon. So the Resident Evil 2 remake looks great, plays great, it's amazing. And that is why it's number 10 on my top 10 favorite games of the last decade. Son of a bitch. Home sweet home. Just from that title screen and that music, it really sets the mood. This game is not for the faint at heart. This is probably one of the scariest games I've ever played. Now home sweet home. It's creepy, it's scary on its own, but I played it on the PlayStation VR, and oh man, you have no idea the sense of terror this game 
puts in you when you're playing on the VR. Basically in this game, you're being hunted, you're being chased, you're being haunted. This first level, it really sets the mood. It lets you know it's not messing around. thing about home sweet home it's not your typical little short horror game either this game is actually quite long especially for a VR game home sweet home has a lot of levels and areas so it's not a quick playthrough I've played the Outlast games and several other horror games and Home Sweet Home is just up there for the terror. Where did she go? If you love horror games, this is an absolute must to play, especially in VR. So be sure to check it out. There you are. Miss. <gasps> what the fuck? Fire Emblem Awakening. A quick note before we start, I do not have a proper way to record game footage from DS or 3DS, so I do apologize for this style, but this is the only way I could record this game. Fire Emblem Awakening is such an amazing game, and it's personally my favorite traditional Fire Emblem game. So it's classic Fire Emblem. It's the grid style strategy game, but it's unique in its way where you can actually get other Fire Emblem characters from other games in your game, such as Tiki and Marth and Celica. Basically, you just select your characters around the map and take out all the opponents to clear each map. Fire Emblem Awakening is a great entry point for anyone that wants to get into Fire Emblem. It has a great story, a great roster of characters, and it's really easy just to pick up and play. This was the first Fire Emblem game I actually fully completed, and I had a blast with it.
This game also has a really great soundtrack. A lot of classic Fire Emblem music in it. For those that don't know, the Smash Bros characters Robin, Lucina, and Krom all made their debut in this Fire Emblem title. There are a lot of different unique classes of characters in this game as well. You got sword fighters, you got tacticians, you got pegasus, you got manikeets. So a lot of really unique characters to keep the gameplay fresh. This actually was the first Fire Emblem in the series to also offer casual mode. So basically what that was is if you was a character in previous Fire Emblem games and they were killed, they were out for the whole game. There was no getting them back. For casual mode, if you lose a character, they die, but only for that map. They're not out for the whole game. So again, that's why this game really is a great starting point for anyone that wants to get into Fire Emblem. I definitely recommend checking out Fire Emblem Awakening. Pikmin 3 So here it is, Pikmin 3. In this version of Pikmin, you get to play not as one, not as two, but three different characters, including Alf. So the premise of Pikmin 3 is very similar to Pikmin 1 and 2. You're basically on a foreign planet and you're just doing various tasks to survive as well as plant, grow, and use Pikmin to your advantage and help you survive. Pikmin 3 plays just like Pikmin 1 and 2. And Pikmin 1 on the GameCube is my favorite game of all time. And I can tell you Pikmin 3 does not disappoint. There are some new Pikmin that were introduced in Pikmin 3, such as the Rock Pikmin and the Flying Pikmin. But noticeably absent is the Poison Pikmin and the Purple Pikmin. So we've seen Louie from Pikmin 2, but hey, where's Olimar? Mr. Pikmin himself. He's right there. Olimar is in Pikmin 3, which was really amazing for me to see him in this game. The usual... Pikmin boss battles are back as well. You just get your army of Pikmin and let loose onto your enemies. Pikmin 3 is a great addition to the Pikmin series and if you're one of the few people that have a Wii U, you should definitely give it a play. Maybe one day we'll see it ported over the Switch so everyone else can enjoy this awesome, awesome Pikmin game. Telltales. The Walking Dead. 
What if my parents come home and I'm not there? I've got my walkie-talkie in case they try that way. Hey, there were some batteries in one of those boxes. Here, you can have some too. I think we should look for your parents. They always stay in the same place when they go there. The Marsh House? Yes, that's it! You didn't come into town from the railroad, did you? We gotta go! <laughs> yeah, why? Clementine? Clementine! Clementine's gone. Wherever she is, I have to find her. We have a better chance of finding her if we all go together. Who's with me? We'll look for Clementine together. Hell yeah. What kind of friend would I be if I wasn't there for you now? You're right. I owe her. Somehow, I gotta make it right. Clementine! This is an episodic, hybrid, point-and-click story game. Basically, you just play through episodes of a story... And it's like an old choose-your-own-adventure kind of book. You make decisions that curb the way the game plays. In the first season here, there's five episodes. And then there's also a bonus episode, 400 Days, where you get to play as other characters outside of the main story. In the first episode, you play as Lee. Lee happens to stumble upon this random house where he meets a little girl named Clementine. He basically takes her under his wing and you're in control of getting them through the zombie outbreak. Three new messages. Message one, left at 5.43 p.m. Hey Sandra, this is Diana. We're still in Savannah. Uh, Ed had a little incident with some crazy guy near the hotel, so we had to get him back to the ER and have it checked out. Anyway, he's not feeling well enough to drive back tonight, so we're staying an extra day. Thanks so much for looking after Clementine, and I promise we'll be back in time before your spring break. Message 2. Left at 11.19 p.m. <gasps> Oh my god, finally. I don't know if you tried to reach us. All, all the calls are getting dropped. They're not letting us leave and aren't telling us anything about Atlanta. Please, please, just leave the city and take Clementine with you back to Murrieta. I've, I've got to get back to the hospital. Please let me know that you're safe. Message 3, left at 6.51 a.m. Clementine, baby. If you can hear this, call the police. That's 911. We love you. We love you. We love you. So you basically get to wander around and you encounter certain situations like this where you're being attacked, and it becomes a quick time kind of segment. I don't know why, but I find that extremely hilarious the way he smacks his head on that counter. What a buffoon! This game has a really great story, and I never expected it to be as great as it is, so I definitely recommend checking out Telltale's The Walking Dead. Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu. This game here was probably the biggest surprise game of the decade for me. When this was announced, I had zero interest in it. But when it actually came out and I picked it up, 
I was blown away. This game is a remake of Pokemon Red and Blue, or Yellow, I suppose you could say. And this was the game I dreamed about as a kid, wishing that the old Game Boy games had awesome graphics like this, similar to Pokemon Stadium. This is the game that I always wanted growing up, and I didn't even realize it. This game is total fan service to us old school Pokemon fans, yet can still be picked up and played and enjoyed from new Pokemon fans. The little details in this game that stand out, such as the original red and blue sound effects for most moves, it just really kicks that nostalgia into full gear. One thing I really like about this game is you can play through the story, you can battle the Elite Four, become the champion, and then there's actually a post game now. You can go back and even fight all the gym leaders again with increased difficulty. Another really cool thing about this game is they took a page from Heart Gold and Soul Silver, and you can actually have your buddy out on the main map here. As you can see, I'm riding Arcanine right now. Absolutely so cool. The one thing they actually changed in this game now is wild Pokemon you can see on the map. So there's no more like super random encounters. The other thing that they change in this game is you don't weaken your Pokemon by battling them. It's set up in the Pokemon Go style or Safari Zone style where you just huck balls at the Pokemon until you catch it. It's actually funny now that you can see Pokemon on the main map because back when I was in like grade 5 or 6 when Pokemon originally launched I used to say to my friends wouldn't it be so cool if you could just see the Pokemon like walking around in the world you could just walk up to them and lo and behold, like 20 plus years later, they did it, and it's awesome. So the Pokemon Let's Go games are the surprise hit of the decade for me, and Pokemon fans alike definitely have to give them a chance. State of Decay 2 So here we have State of Decay 2. Are you a fan of zombies? Do you like The Walking Dead? Well this game is for you. It's literally like playing an old episode of The Walking Dead. There's no like stupid things that go on. No like crazy insane out of this world uh, infected smart zombies. It's just zombies and you're surviving. You collect food, you search houses, you recruit people. This is the ultimate zombie survivor game. This would be a good spot for an outpost. Locked. I really enjoyed State of Decay 1. But the reason why State of Decay 2 made it on this list is because they added multiplayer. And that is amazing. So not only are you surviving the zombie outbreak, but you can do it with a friend. You and a friend head out at night or during the day 
and go get outposts, collect food, ammo, building supplies, medical supplies. You know, it, it's just more fun with a friend. And you have that extra little bit of security with you knowing someone's got your back. The game has a really great map system too. You can basically go to scouting points or lookout points and see things around, mark it on your map, and then go check it out at your leisure. In this game, you literally can just go find abandoned cars, repair them or get them fuel, bring them back to your base. You know, you don't like where your, your camp is set up, and go find somewhere new. You know, you can go help fellow survivors, try to recruit them into your camp. You know, there's just so much to do in this game. It really is the best zombie survivor game I've ever played. Something at least. We got a zombie approaching. The level of realism in this game is so great. Let's say you're driving down the road and your vehicle runs out of gas and you gotta hoof it back to your camp or go find some gas. Well guess what, come back two days later, that car is still exactly where you left it. Same thing goes with supplies you find in houses. Let's say you're a little full and you can't hold anything else. You leave something in a house, you go back, it's there. Super, super cool details like that make this game the ultimate zombie survivor game. So one question I have is, if you're just surviving the zombie outbreak, is there an endpoint? Can you beat this game? And the answer is yes, you can. I have completed both stages of K1 and 2. Basically, boss fights in this game would be kind of these infestations where it's a whole bunch of zombies just in one little area and it's your goal to get out there and clear them out of the town. There are special infected in this game as well, similar to like Left 4 Dead special infected. There's these like screamer guys, these bloaters, and these like hunter type guys that come and chase after you, you know, and, and they're pretty realistic. It's not over the top on realism, so there is a sense of fear when dealing with special infected or even normal infected. There are some special infected that are really tough. They're similar to tanks from Left 4 Dead. They're really hard to take out and definitely the hardest special infected to take out in the game. There's just so much to do in this game, you know, you just want to play for a little bit and then four or five hours later, you're like, holy and smokes, I'm are. still playing this. It's just so fun to explore, collect, build up your camp. The air is making my eyes burn. Must be a plague heart nearby. Another unique thing about State of Decay is your survivor. If you just run out there being stupid or get trapped or taken out, guess what? You're dead. That's it. Game over. That character is out of your game, out of your life. There's no going back. You can't even cheat and turn the console off really quick 
because you lose them anyway. Trust me, I tried. I lost my best person that I had in my camp. All max stats, absolutely a beast out there in survival, and a little mishap, and I lost them. And it was super depressing. It actually even brings your morale down at your camp. So again, such realism in this zombie survivor game. The customization of the home base is so cool as well. You want to have solar panels? You can. You can build a garden, have a sniper tower, you can build extra beds, have a bigger kitchen, you can have a medical tent. Just so much you can do with your home base. You really make this game your own. down another great feature in this Place game like is let's say you're out scavenging like I am here and you can't hold anything else on your body well you get a car or a van and guess what you can load that sucker up with materials and items and drive it all back another great thing about this game is it has amazing replay value so let's say you get through the story and you complete the game well guess what you can move to a new town that you've never been to different layout with the same people used in your first playthrough and start up a new camp in a new town you know I played through this game twice and the second time around it was completely different it was awesome any fan of zombie games or survival games have to give State of Decay 2 a playthrough you won't be disappointed The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild. Where do I begin on this amazing game? This is a Zelda game that completely redefines Zelda games. Yes, it's different, but it pays tribute to classic Zelda games. For instance, the Hylian Shield there. There are so many Easter eggs in this game referencing previous Zelda games. It's probably impossible to find them all. The world in Zelda Breath of the Wild is absolutely enormous. One of the biggest problems I had in this game was I'd be running somewhere to do a mission or a task and I would get sidetracked. Just always getting sidetracked. It was crazy. It's hard to stay focused in this game because it's so huge and there's just so much to do. You know, with the gliding ability like you see here, on top of teleporting and running, walking, getting a horse, or even with the DLC, getting the bike. There's so many ways to get around this world to explore everything that this world has to offer. Ask anybody that's played this game, and I guarantee you they've had tons of fun just spending hours and hours outside of the main story, just exploring and seeing what's out there. Like, you're battling some enemies and suddenly this mystical dragon just comes out of nowhere. You know, it's just distractions everywhere, but good distractions. Some new things in this game have been added, such as these ruins, which you have like magnetic powers, or you can create blocks of ice, or you can actually temporarily freeze time or enemies. 
there's just so much in this game they've expanded on Zelda so much and I feel like this is just one of the greatest games of all time let alone just of this decade let's kick that fan service into full gear here and just check out some of these costumes you can get in this game That's right, you're looking at Fierce Didi's outfit, or Fierce Didi, however you pronounce it. Heck, even Dark Link's outfit, one of my favorite outfits in this game. How cool is that? And of course, the iconic Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time outfit, as well as Wind Waker outfit and yes Twilight Princess outfit even the Skyward Sword outfit like wow total fan service absolutely appreciated in this game and as you can see here there's jumping and there's climbing in this Zelda game and again, that's really a big part of the fun of this game. Let's say you're out exploring and you see a huge mountain in the distance. Guess what? You can get to it and you can climb it. It's just so open and nothing will hold you back. So what I'm doing here is one of my favorite things in Breath of the Wild. And this is a Lionel. The battles with these things are incredibly difficult. There are several different types of Lionels that you can face off. This one here is the second hardest, and I call it the Zebra, but it's the Silver Lionel. Honestly, I would say the Lionel fights are probably harder than Ganon himself. These are probably the toughest enemies in the game in my opinion. But it's just so much fun to take these guys out. I really love having the stasis there just to stop the guy and do some serious damage. Really helps out on these Lionel battles. I remember the first Lionel I ever encountered. I went in there pretty confident and boy did I get my behind handed to me. These guys are definitely not easy to take down, especially when you're at the start of the game. Unless you're a master at dodging of course. But by the end of the game, when you're loaded up with all sorts of armor and weapons and upgrades, they're not that difficult, but still challenging enough. This is such an amazing Zelda game, and it's an instant classic, and it will be remembered for years to come. You gotta try it out. It's so amazing. Again, probably one of the best games of all time, let alone this decade. So please, if you haven't played Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, you need to.
Fire Emblem Warriors. Three hundred and thirteen hours and fourteen minutes. That's how long I've spent on this game, Fire Emblem Warriors. Some of you may be wondering, how? How did he spend over 300 hours in Fire Emblem Warriors? That game's not good. That game had terrible sales. How? I'll tell you how. This game is so much fun! Even if you're not a huge Fire Emblem fan, this game was a blast. I don't know how to, to really describe it any more than that. It's just so action-packed. It's got a really awesome level of strategy. It's got total fan service to Fire Emblem fans. Yeah. So what kind of game is this? Well, it's kind of a real-time strategy game. It's not classic Fire Emblem, so you classic Fire Emblem fans out there may not enjoy it. But I find this better than classic Fire Emblem. You get that level of strategy, but then you get to go out and do the battles in real time. And that's a ton of fun. The hack and slash style of the Dynasty Warrior games combined with Fire Emblem, that's what this is. It's Dynasty Warriors Fire Emblem Edition. Before every stage, you basically do classic Fire Emblem stuff here, and you set everybody to certain points on the map. But then, when the game starts, that's when the fun begins. Instead of just having characters walk across a generic grid, you're actually out there on the field controlling them in real time, taking out hordes of enemies. So when you're down on the battlefield, this is where the Dynasty Warriors kind of kicks in, where you have all these mini bases and you try to overtake them all. There are boss fights as well in this, so it's not just beating up a bunch of generic enemies. Other Fire Emblem characters do appear, and they're much harder than generic enemies, and you have to take them out. Now, you would think fighting just hordes and hordes of generic basic enemies over and over and over would get really boring, but that's where you're wrong. My turn. A lot of the time you have to jump into the map quick and reset some of your characters to head to new locations as new missions pop up during the match. This mapping system is so well done that you can set them to just a standard point where they'll go and attack or you could set them to go after a certain character. There's just so many different strategies you can use. So back on the battlefield, that's where you're button mashing again, fighting these hordes. But it's more than just pressing a bunch of attack buttons. You can actually change up your button combos and do different moves. It really does break up the monotony of just hitting swarms and swarms of enemies. With a lot of these combos, you can do a lot of really cool, interesting moves for certain characters. You can do lots of special moves when you save up your meter like Selic is doing here. Now, there's more than just those base overtaking stages as well. There's arena modes and several other modes. In arena mode, you basically just take out a few generic enemies and then a boss every certain rounds. It's basically like a survival mode. Even more features in this game is you can actually unlock and power up certain weapons for each character as well. Every character has unique moves and unique specials, so really, if you get tired of just using standard swords characters, you can use characters here like Tiki, and she attacks in a completely different way than tacticians and swordsmen. It's probably really hard to understand how someone could sink 300 plus hours into a game that's just 
basically a fancy beat em up. There are just dozens of levels like this, and some of them are so long that I've spent a good half an hour on just a single one. So that really keeps you busy. When this game was announced, I wasn't even that interested in it. I just thought, oh cool, another Fire Emblem game, I'll just pick it up. But little did I know that this game would be so much fun, so action packed, that it would just bump its way up to one of my favorite games of all time. I could say that Fire Emblem Warriors is almost a hidden gem. It didn't get the love that traditional Fire Emblem games get, which is a shame because Fire Emblem Warriors is so action packed and so much fun. I was so excited to play Fire Emblem Warriors, I'd be at work all day thinking about it. Just can't wait to get home and play it. I haven't had a game do that to me since I was a kid. This game had me hooked. It's such a fun and amazing game, and even if you're not a big Fire Emblem fan, I still think you could have a lot of fun with it. So, check it out. Alright, before we get to number one, I just want to do a few honorable mentions here. Again, there are so many great games that came out in the last decade, so I want to give these next few games a little bit of love. Paranormal Activity, The Lost Soul. Job Simulator. Grand Theft Auto V. Mario Party. The top 100. Life is strange. Outlast 1 and 2, Bundle of Terror. Super Smash Bros. Ultimate. Ridley, 
Simon, Richter, King K. Rool, Isabel, Incineroar, Arana Flat, Joker, Hero, Banjo and Kazooie. Look at that amazing roster. That roster is legendary. But this game is more than a big roster. It's got stages. Oh, does it have stages. So many legendary characters, so many great stages, every stage having a plethora of music from its respective universe. This game truly is a legendary crossover. There's so many great things I could say about this game, but unless you've been living under a rock, you know about Smash Bros. Ultimate. You know what a big deal it is. It's Smash Bros. And it's Ultimate. So many great characters. Characters like Banjo-Kazooie. Characters like Snake. Characters like Cloud. Like Mega Man, Pac-Man. All these legendary gaming characters all in one game. Did you ever think you would see that? See Ryu and Terry Bogart fighting Banjo Kazooie and Snake? That's crazy. This is like true fan service. This game for me is a dream come true. This really is the ultimate game. That is why this game is number one on my favorite game of the past decade. When this game was announced, that Splatoon Inkling Smash Bros trailer got me so hyped. And then that big waiting period, that nine months of waiting for this game to come out was torture. I have never been this excited for a game ever. I was incredibly hyped for Super Smash Bros Ultimate. And you know what? It was worth the wait. This game is so amazing. You know, everybody is here. There's more DLC coming. Like, what else could you want from a crossover fighting game? I could just go on forever about how great this game is, how much I love this game. This is just awesome. As most of you know, I am a huge gaming fan. I love the history of video games. And what better way to celebrate the history of video games than a huge crossover game like this. This has characters from all sorts of places. 
all in one. It's just, you know, wow. Great job. I have Smash Bros nights quite often at my place and that's what's great about Smash Bros, any of the Smash Bros is you can be a pro player, you can be a competitive player, or you can be a complete noob and anybody can pick up this game and play. With simple controls and a huge roster like this, there's something for everybody here. I have people that come over and have never even played Smash Bros. They can pick up and start button mashing and you know a few minutes in they're laughing and having a great time with it. That's the beauty of Smash Bros. It can be a fun party game, it can be a competitive game, it can be an appreciation of everything gaming. There's something for everybody in Super Smash Bros Ultimate. This is the type of game that you can put countless hours into and still have fun. There'll be little periods where we'll play for weeks on end every day, have game nights every weekend, have a blast with this game. And then it'll taper off and we'll take a break and you can come right back into it, pick it up and play again and BAM! It's like you didn't miss a beat. It's like riding a bike. Nintendo and Sakurai have announced that more DLC is coming and at the time of the filming of this video Terry Bogart had just come out so it really excites me knowing that Nintendo is supporting this game a year later from its release and I hope they continue to support this game for a long time because I feel like we will never get another Smash Bros that truly is this ultimate. Aside from traditional smash and the story mode, some of my favorite things to do in this game is squad strike, which is new for ultimate. Basically you take your top 3 or 5 characters you want and have a Marvel vs Capcom style fight. I think that is a great addition to this game and I really love it. Another thing that I really love about ultimate is amiibo training. I'll basically beat the snot out of my amiibos up to level 50 and then get my friends to fight the amiibos and it's hilarious. I really enjoy the amiibo training and I think that's another great addition to the Smash Bros game. I can't say enough good things about Super Smash Bros Ultimate. It is my number one choice for my favorite game of the last decade and it is also now one of my most favorite games of all time. Well there we have it, my top 10 favorite games of the past decade. Again it wasn't easy picking only 10 but I love each and every one of these 10 games and I think everyone should give them a try. I want to end the video by saying thank you to everybody for a great 2019. Thanks for watching. Thanks for all the support. Thanks for being a part of the channel. I want to wish everybody all the best in 2020. This will be my final video of 2019. So again, thank you everybody. Happy New Year. All right, that's going to wrap up today's video. Be sure to follow me on social media. More information in the description below. Be sure to check out my other videos, comment, like, subscribe, and share. I am the Console Collector. I want to thank everybody for watching, and until the next video, 
Happy gaming.